to the broadcast. Today we start a new series. This series will be a combination of scripture study and personal experiences in ministry. Our scripture today is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 14 beginning at verse 1 to verse 12. Let's go now to the Word of God. At that time, Herod the Tariff heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. And therefore these powers are at work in him. For Herod had laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Because John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Therefore he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. So she, having been prompt by her mother, said, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he commanded it to be given to her. So he sent and had John beheaded in prison and his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl and she brought it to her mother then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus May God add a blessing to the hearers of his read word. We note here in this passage, we're going to use for today's topic, verse 12. Then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus I must tell Jesus oh hallelujah let's note in the scripture text Herod had imprisoned John the baptizer for fearlessly denouncing the king's unlawful marriage to Herodias, the former wife of Herod's brother, Philip. Herodias, she was furious about this and demanded the execution of John the baptizer. Herodias, however, aided by dancing charms of her beautiful daughter and the king's own sensual nature, demanded and received the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Herod, who was troubled and perplexed, later feared that Jesus was really John the baptizer resurrected. Thus, the greatest New Testament prophet passed from the earthly scene. Now, mind you, I just covered a lot of territory there. 
But I want you to look in the scriptures, in your Bible. I'm giving you some homework now. And that homework will be to read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 1 to 11. And as you read it, this is where John was commended by Jesus of completing his mission. And also, Jesus, in this tribute, if you will, was saying concerning John the baptizer that he was a great man of God. The forerunner, the one that was assigned to be the one that prepared the way for Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I recall it was this same John the Baptizer when they questioned him, Are you the Christ? He said, Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not even worthy to unlatch his shoes. But there's one that's coming after me is mightier than I. Oh, I know my assignment, and I understand that I must decrease, and he must increase. So as you do your homework, I want you to pay close attention to all the great things Jesus says about John the Baptist. As Jesus commended John in these verses, verse 12 points out to us in the 14th chapter of Matthew that after John's death, and I'm speaking of John the baptizer, it informs us that his disciples came and took away the body of Jesus. John and buried it and went and told Jesus. Can you imagine how they felt? Can you imagine what these disciples was going through? All of a sudden, this great man of God, his life was taken and note the fashion in which it was taken. Murder, his head cut off, put on a platter, and can you imagine if you was part of that celebration that night, and after seeing such a elaborate and sensual dance by this daughter of Herodias, and now she comes with the platter, John the baptizes head on it and presents it to her mother. Oh, had to be a sad experience. Have you, and I want to get a little personal here, have any of you experienced a tragic death. And what I mean by that, the results of a bad car accident. Someone in your family who maybe was murdered. An unexpected accident that all of a sudden their life was taken. Now, I don't know about you, but when these things happen suddenly, and then, when you factor in, they was innocent. They was not the cause of their sudden death. Then, you are wondering and you're puzzled and you have questions that enter your mind. The first question is, why? Why? Well, this is our whole point today. It's something, and sometimes, the only person 
you can tell is Jesus. Jesus is the one that he understands. He the one can be the shoulder that we need to cry on. Because sometimes your best friend, sometimes family members, they don't quite get it. They don't quite understand where you are in this grieving time. And all you can do is go and tell Jesus. I actually commend the disciples the action they took. They took the body, gave him a burial, and the next thing on the agenda, let's go tell Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I swing now to tell you an experience I had. So I can talk about this. I never forget an early part of my leadership position here in Clearwater. That a young male athlete by the age of 15, he was out one afternoon and innocent as he could be, and two men drove by and shot him. And the shots, the bullets lodged and took his life. It was a mistaken identity. They thought the young man was somebody else they was looking for. And I don't know what was the motive, but here this young 15 year old football player athlete his life was taken all of a sudden I never forget when I received the call from the mother and I had to go to the home so much weeping and wailing and crying and yes, that question came up time after time. Why? How could this have happened? And we really had to pray for the mother because at that point in time, I thought we was going to lose her. She was just torn apart. And that's when this scripture text came to my mind. And all I could give her as we prayed and comfort her is to tell her, you just got to tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. That's right. It's important that we understand what Peter told us in his letter, you recall, 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care on him, speaking of Jesus, because he cares for you. He understands. He can help us in situations like this. When nobody understands. When we have the questions why. And as I speak this morning. Is every family. Can bring back a time. When they was there. When they was experiencing. What this young mother was experiencing. And also a time. When they experienced what these disciples in Matthew 14 experienced. Because John the baptizer was such a great man. What do we do in situations like this? Well, as I 
shared with the family and preach and eulogize that young man and oh as I looked in the church standing room only all his classmates and, and I thought we had got through the difficult part at the church but then at the cemetery as I stood at the foot of the casket and then made my way to the front praise God at the head of the casket to commit the body to the ground and it was so touching I never forget it all his classmates all had a role I have never experienced so many roses that all behold when we did the committal and they lowered that casket into the ground and all those hundreds and hundreds of roses just tossed there on the casket. It was something to experience. And it took that mother and that family some time to get over it because they had to do the investigation. They had to finally track these two men down. Then the trial, and you know, and on and on and on. But I want to encourage you today. If you have experienced anything like that, or if you were supportive to someone or some family who have experienced such a tragic death, it ain't no better way. There's no other way. You just must tell Jesus. So I feel that the disciples gave us the best answer and the best example of what to do. I just got to go and tell Jesus. Jesus understands. Jesus cares. The scripture says in Psalms 121, these times we got to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And then I'm reminded as we close that old familiar song that the songwriter wrote. I must tell Jesus. The old hymn writer will say, I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Then the chorus will go like this. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Oh, I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make of my troubles quickly and end. Oh, yes, I must. Come on, help me say it. I must 
tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Be encouraged. You're not by yourself. Cast your care on him. He will get you through. And we're praying for you that if any have experienced such a tragic death by a family member, co-worker, or friend, God will get you through. He's a very present help in trouble. And he promised to never leave you, never forsake you. And he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I must tell Jesus. Will you still await and tell him? Just speak from your heart. He's listening. Go tell him. Will you do that today? May God continue to bless you. And until we meet again, may his peace abide within you.